Hi guys, Chris Cartridge here from odratdigital.com with the Odrat review of Machine Micro. Uh, you can see we've got the unit here and in comparison to the original machine, Micro is roughly two thirds the height, it's exactly the same width and um, it's just about two thirds of the price as well. So uh, what we're going to try and figure out is whether it's worth saving the money or who it's worth saving the money for. The build quality of Micro is just as sturdy as anything else you'd expect from Native Instruments, it's just as sturdy as the original machine. Uh, I really like the form factor of Micro for some reason, I don't know whether it's the ratio of the length of the sides. Uh, it strikes me as something that if and I really wanted to, they could probably have made a better punt, a miniature version of machine. This strikes me as something that NI are putting on the market because there are people who they don't think or have been told need uh, some of the user interface features and functionality that the full version of machine has. I don't think this is really designed to um, be a, a, a miniature alternative to machine and it really isn't. The lack of group buttons is mitigated by this group button here and it makes absolutely no difference to your workflow. It's just as easy to use the group buttons. Another way that NI have mitigated the stripping of controls is with this nav button. Uh, now the nav button in actual fact is something that the original machine controller could do with because it integrates functions that have been iteratively added to versions of machine as time goes by. If you hold down the nav button it acts as a sort of a second shift layer to the buttons and the top four pads become a way of switching modules and then the other pads become ways of going through pages in those modules. Now they're not marked down on the controller itself but it wouldn't make sense to mark them down on the controller because each different module can have different names of pages. So once you memorise the ones that suit your workflow, it is a way of going through pages quite quickly. However, if you don't commit to memorising things, or indeed if your workflow is genuinely too varied, it's not going to be the biggest time saver. Uh, instead of the 11 encoders on the original machine, Machine Micro has just the one encoder and it's also got push button functionality. In reality, you do find yourself wishing for some extra knobs if you're used to the original machine, but at a pinch, Micro's single control knob and new way of working does work and allow you to keep your hands away from your keyboard and mouse for most of the simpler functions of machine. When it comes down to it, there isn't really anything that Machine Micro does better than machine. Um, it's got a much brighter screen than the machine's two screens, but at the same time, it doesn't show as much. Um, it's nice that it has the blue lighting on the pad, so if we go to the group we can see that it lights up blue, but they're not really of use in any way except to mitigate the fact that there's no group buttons. Another thing that Micro doesn't have is MIDI on the back. Uh, machine has actually got five pin in and out, whereas Micro uh, is just the USB socket. Um, that might mean nothing to you, it might mean everything to you. It really depends on your usage. Most people nowadays aren't using uh, MIDI 5 pin in and out, so it's not a huge deal to them. So if you're thinking about getting Micro as a, as a starter setup, I wouldn't let the lack of 5 pin MIDI sway your decision in any way. Because of the fact that Micro cuts away a lot of the controls that make it good for using as a uh, user interface, you're really cutting your nose off to spite your face if you use it purely for um, all of your integration and navigation through the software and so on. Uh, that said, there are one or two problems that we noticed uh, if you do intend to use it for sample browsing and so on and so forth, which it is perfectly good for, um, but there are a couple of problems. The first one is these left and right buttons. Now, as you can see, there are actually four values that we can go to here uh, and it just seems like a bit of a missed opportunity for native instruments to only have put a left and right here because it's annoying to switch between uh, top left and bottom right and, and vice versa when all you've got is left and right it just seems strange that there's no up down left right or maybe even a small joystick or something like that 
Another issue is it's probably something that can be fixed with a, a software update or option because it's in the software and the issue occurs when if we go to search for a sound as opposed to a group or just a sample, once we've found a sound that we like, it's very easy to load it into the pads. It's also very easy to browse through different sounds. However, if you preview a sound by pressing a pad, then the pad switches into sample, which means that when we next go to change the uh, sound to the next one in the list, it actually only changes the sample and disrupts your workflow, which is a shame. But once again, it leans more towards the fact that micro is good for somebody who uses a keyboard and mouse and their big screen and uses this to really sort of help their workflow rather than being their main uh, go-to piece of equipment. When you consider that all of the controls on the original machine were designed to be able to uh, allow you to keep your eyes on the unit and away from your computer, stripping those away from Machine Micro means that it's not such a great uh, unit for emulating a Groovebox workflow. It's a much better unit for complementing the workflow of somebody who's comfortable with the keyboard and mouse sitting next to them and indeed the, uh, the large high resolution screen which is admittedly one of the, the biggest bonuses of using computer based music software over something like an MPC or an MV or so on and so forth that the original machine is ironically pulling the market share away from. Micro comes with the full machine software, exactly the same as you'd get with machines, its big brother. One of the best things about machine is that you can get things out of the box and just start making beats. It's really not suited towards somebody who uses a lot of long sampling or a lot of live vocals or anything like that. But that said, it's really, really good for people who, uh, perhaps hip hop producers and so on, that like to sample because it's actually more or less the only piece of software that can direct sample into it and chop and slice and get ready to go again uh, without having to use any other wave editing software or any of the like, which makes it the most analogous to something like an MPC. And Machine Micro still does that. It's more convoluted because of the fact that there's less controls but it still works just as well. So the fact that it's got the full software and it does have all the capabilities of the full software makes it the perfect piece of equipment for somebody perhaps who can't afford to, uh, to jump to the whole machine, um, but does have the computer ready and waiting for them. Another use case that Machine Micro really speaks to is the kind of user that wants to use Machine as a plugin host for their DAW, set up their MIDI ins and outs and their audio outputs. So the Machine is a track in a DAW with audio tracks going into and out of it and MIDI tracks going into and out of it. And using Machine's really quite smart uh, plugin and instrument loader so that the different groups can all have different uh, plugins and it's a hands-on way of organising and setting up your projects without having to use your DAWs. That might be something you're interested in and it might not. One use case that Machine Micro is terrible for is uh, just as a pad controller. If all you're interested in is the pads then it's by far the most expensive controller on the market of its type and it'd be a real waste of money over something like the Akai MPD that 18 perhaps has a quarter of the price or it's fully featured MPD 32 which has got all the knobs and sliders uh, which is two thirds the price. If you're looking at machine instead of an MPC it'll probably be because you want all of the opportunities that software brings. Uh, so with that said there's no real point in comparing Machine Micro to, say, for instance, an MPC-1000 because an MPC-1000 has got a lot, probably a lot smoother and integrated workflow than, than Micro, although not than Machine. I think the real, the real gap in the market for Machine Micro is the fact that for £300 in the UK at least, it's a very, very good entry level piece of equipment or it's a good way to augment your existing setup as we spoke before about maybe using it as a plugin host inside a DAW. 
Okay, depending on when you're watching this video, it'll either be here now or it'll be here soon, but uh, I'm gonna link in a Machine Micro beat making video so that you can uh, go through the workflow of Machine Micro with me and we'll come to a finished result. But all in all, um, we like Machine Micro, don't really love it, but there are definite people who are going to love it. Okay, well that's all for me for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to, uh, to make sure you get the latest reviews and tutorials and features. Also head over to overactdigital.com, our home on the web, for more of the same as well as news, artist interviews, features and much more. Uh, so I'll see you again soon. Cheers.